Hello, my name is Sonia. I'm from Sakai Consulting. Today we're going to review Sage and Tax change order process. Changes to the scope of work can alter project cost estimates, submitted costs, and the price of a project contract. Without a proper change order process to track these changes, cost overruns can cut into profit margin. Today I will review the change request and project change orders functionality within Intact. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your order entry transaction definitions for contracts and contract change orders are set up correctly. To do that, you're going to want to go to order entry, setup, and transaction definitions. Within contracts and contract change orders, you want to make sure that you've enabled the change order workflow and that the document type is the source document if it's a contract. If it's a change order, you want to make sure that the document type is change document. The same is true if you were doing it for subcontractor invoices and subcontractor change orders. You want the invoice to have the listed as a source document and you want the subcontractor change order to be listed as a change document document type. Once those are set up correctly, you're going to go into projects, set up and update your change request status and your change request types. Your change request status is going to allow the system to update your project estimate. The only workflow type that does not update a project estimate is the workflow type of none. The naming conventions are all user defined, so you can set up the system however it is you use it within your organization. For change request types, these are also user defined and they do not prompt anything within the system. This is only fields that are, this only is for fields to be reportable. Now that you have your change request status and types within the system, you want to make sure you have a project estimate in order to post a change request to it. Within change requests, I already have two, so I'm going to view them and, and review the change requests. Your change request ID can be anything you want, any sort of combination. For now, we have it to be the project ID. Uh, it's the part of the first project estimate and change request one. You tag the project ID, you put in a change request date, you select your request status and request type. Again, this approve request status has a workflow type of approved change, so it will update your project estimate. You can put in any sort of description. You can set up a price effective date, a cost effective date, and you can even send this request to a contact. Within the entry field, you're going to tag a project, the cost code, the cost types, the item, and then the quantity, unit cost, or straight cost without putting in a quantity or a unit cost, the unit price, and um, the actual price. You can even put a price markup percentage. Once you have saved this, your estimate ID will, will be attached to each line. Now that the change request is in, we're going to review how to add it to a change order. I'm going to select the project. I'm going to create an ID for this. Click the project change order date and the price effective date. And then I could put in any sort of description that makes sense. You're going to select an item. So this is the item that is going to be billed on your contract. And then you could select the status. Once you filled out the header portion in order to bring in a change request, you do need to select draft or post. Um, if you do forget and you go to select a change request, you are gonna get an error message that tells you to add a change request this pro to this project. You are going to need to save the changes and then edit to add the, that request in. I'm gonna go ahead and select draft. And now I'm gonna go back to edit. And now I can select the change request. Now that the change request is in, I'm going to go ahead and post this change order. From here, you can go into order entry and add those lines to the contract change order. And then select the project, which will auto populate the customer for me. I'm going to make sure that this date makes sense. Your source document number is going to be the original source document. So I'm adding a change order to my contract of CN00021. So I want to make sure I'm linking it together. And I'm going to add my 
item ID. And I'm going to add in the amount that I've added in post. Now that the contract change order is in, you are able to go ahead and generate an invoice with the change order line. I do want to show you that the project estimate did update. If you view this, you'll see that the original estimate was for $118,200. However, right now the estimate total is showing $148,200. And that is because these change requests have gone in and added $30,000 to the estimate total. Thank you for watching my review of the change order functionality within Impact.